Hey everyone, this is a clip from a recent episode of Another Pass, where we talk about movies and all the struggles that go into making them. If you like it, check out the whole podcast. You can find it at certainpov.com or wherever you get your podcasts. God, see, the three of us were just riffing like comedy legends, just somehow just slipping back into the mold, uh, as was the dream when putting together today's movie, uh, because today we are talking about Ghostbusters 2. Uh-huh, we are. <laughs> It's a movie. <laughs> it's a movie. And the third act is fun. And I think that's what I remember from my childhood, honestly, was the third act where everything picks up and stuff really, really, really happens, you know? And uh, the I didn't remember about all the stuff beforehand that I was like, oh, when are we going to get to the <laughs> Statue of Liberty? <laughs> So this was kind of, as an adult, this was a little painful to rewatch and kind of wish it had stayed in my childhood memories. (laughs) Yeah, this is my first time watching it in a long time. I'm not sure if I've watched it as an adult, frankly. Yeah, I don't think I have. How did it Uh, feel? How did it feel? Maybe in my teens? Maybe my teens I did? I I don't think I've watched it since (laughs) I've become an adult. I I will say that we, when we're recording this, is right after we dropped the episode on Ghostbusters and how incredible of a work it was to actually get that out the door and have it be such a a wonderful film. Um, And looking at Ghostbusters 2, there's a lot of good things throughout the whole movie. I can see why I liked it a lot as a kid, because like my actual doorway into Ghostbusters was the real Ghostbusters, the cartoon from the 80s. And this uh, this uh, and we'll talk about it was heavily influenced by that show. And there's plenty of good moments spattered throughout. But like the total package isn't there. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a movie that you 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 watch and you're like, it's not it's not a bad movie. You, you can't say, oh, you know, I really hated that movie, especially if you're a fan of Ghostbusters. It's just you, you watch it, you you have those moments where you're you kind of have a sigh of relief. Ah, yes, this is you know Ghostbuster moments, and then you're it, it's over and you're like, huh. That's it. I, I mean, for me, my biggest issue while I was watching it is Peter Vakeman is the worst. <laughs> like, I didn't realize that as a kid, right? Like, as a kid, he was just like one liners here or there. Like, he walked in, he walked out. But in this movie, Peter Vakeman is the worst. Like, he was like not the worst in the first movie. Like, he was like appropriately sprinkled in the first movie. In this movie, he is the worst. And I think that like it's very interesting because we've had an experience, right? We 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 watch this first movie and State Puff Marshmallow Man and all these amazing things happened and they're heroes. And I think it's totally okay to begin where it's like it's been five years and the world forgets because especially we're living in our world right now and we can see how short attention spans are of people for any kind of tragedy. However, like Peter just kind of coming in and rehashing exactly what he is and kind of it just his whole character feels stale in this film especially since we just watched the first Ghostbusters it just feels yeah yeah well and then his arc in this whole movie is the same because just like with a little bit more oomph because it's him just trying to like win over Dana and in this case Dana has a child so there's like an element of like well I've got to also prove that I could be a good dad but like it's the same. But like, he doesn't prove it at all because the child's in no, danger. No. <laughs> well, in neither movie, though, like all of a sudden they're like boyfriend, girlfriend at the end of the first movie. I'm like, when did that happen? They didn't even go on their date. Well, and then, <laughs> like, but, but like, honestly, honestly, he's the worst. Like the child was practically abducted by a ghost. And he's just like, all right, toots, now that you're staying in my place, we're going to go on a date. I'm going to get you a babysitter. What? What? But there was there was the the second where she had the ability to say this is a terrible idea, but she went with it. I know, and that's like the craziest yeah. shit. Like like on both levels, I'm just like, what? And I will say this: this is this is wisdom passed down from my mother. An ex is an example of what not to do again. And definitely Dana needs to get into some therapy because she keeps choosing terrible people. And Vakeman is definitely an example of something not to do again. Stop it, Dana. Stop it. (laughs) 
Yeah, it's like apparently they had a relationship in the interim, one that she wanted him to propose and he didn't. And so she moved on, found someone else, got married to that person, had a baby, then got divorced and all all within the span of the last five years. <laughs> and left her job. She left her job. Now suddenly she's working in an art museum and... We were, we are going to talk wait, about that dumb wait, fucking shit. Wait, wait, let's go, let's go back for half a second though. Because at the dinner, just just to go back to their relationship, and then we will move on to Dana's poor life decisions because we need to talk about this. Um, <laughs> at the dinner, he says like, "Why did you break up with me?" And she said, "Well, you were bad for me." And he's like, "Because I'm a terrible person." And then she has to reassure him, and this is why he's the fucking worst. Because then she reassures him that he's really not that bad and he's really like a kind hearted person. He's like, you know, I really needed to hear that. And I was just like, oh my God, oh my God, stab me in the eye. Like, I was just like, who, why? Not just he needs what? to hear it. He needs to hear that for like a century, he says. So there's something yeah. to that effect. I need that validation every day. <laughs> oh, why? why are you like, hmm, I find that so attractive that I validate you constantly? Let me do so. Ugh. And I feel like there's a lot in the script where they they tell us something, but they don't actually show us. Like they're like, and she's like, "You're so kind and and understanding and caring." And I'm like, I feel like he's nice to you because he wants to get in your pants. I don't feel like he really gives a shit about your kid or the ghost chasing them or ghost at all. Like honestly. <laughs> well, he did. He did potentially sacrifice his jets sweatshirt that supposedly was given to him by Joe Namath that was then used as a diaper. I don't I don't see how Joe Namath would have been wearing a a, a jet sweatshirt. Or... He has an apartment in New York. There's a Dwayne Reed across the street. <laughs> like I don't care where he lives in New York. There's a Dwayne Reed there's, across the street. There's definitely a place open with diapers. Like and I was like, I'm sorry, sir. You cannot tell a child that you swaddle in a diaper. Do not ruin this. Like what what what? What? You're putting it over its butthole, sir. That's what it does. That's what it does. It does not have a job yet. That is what it does. So poor life choices. Yeah. Poor, uh, poor life choices. Yeah, lots of poor life choices. <laughs> Remember, if you like that clip, check out the podcast. You can find it at certainpov.com or wherever you get your podcasts.